here we have our full Python code. So first we will import the Python packages we are going to use. As usual, we are going to use PyTorch. We we'll use matplotlib, pyplot to plot. We we'll use Librosa to handle audio and NumPy for other array operations. We can also use a GPU or a CPU. So if you have a GPU or you're, if you're running this uh, using Google Colab, you can set your environment to use a GPU and then you can run everything using the GPU. Another auxiliary function that we've been using before is this function to convert a signal vector X, like for example a mono audio signal, into the tensor uh, prepared for the convolutional layer of PyTorch. Here is the class conv autoencoder that we mentioned before, where we set our layers. So we have the convolutional one-dimensional layer, we have the convolutional transposed one dimension, we set our encoder, our decoder, and then we have the forward that puts together the encoder and the decoder. Now we can load an audio, and in this case I'm going to use the legendary rock and roll ACDC introduction of Back in Black, and we will use an stereo file that one channel, for example the left, will be used for training, and the right will be used for testing, for example. So I am loading using Librosa, then we are normalizing, so we have the amplitudes going from minus one to one, and then we're applying our signal to PyTorch, and we have an X train and an X test that we're going to use later. Now we are creating our generating our model, and we have here the loss function that is the mean squared error loss. We also have the length of the signal at the output of the network. Then we set the target signal with the same length as the model uh, output. And these are the parameters that we have. We generate our models and we will have a total number of trainable parameters. We will have the length of the output, then we set. So the target and the input, they have the same length. Next, we set our optimizer and we are going to use an ADAM with the learning rate starting with a 1e uh, e to the power of minus 4. And then we can also uh, save um, our weights that we've been doing before. But here we're just training using the uh, X train that we defined later. And as I explained, there is this for loop and we go in using 10,000 epochs. So now the model is training and we can see that it starts with the loss function very high equals 0 0.01 and then it goes down to as low as 0 0.027 something. So after our model is trained, we can read the obtained weights and we can also plot the um, encoder analysis filter and the decoder filters for subband zero and also the encoder and decoder filter coefficients. And this is what we have here, the encoder and decoder filter coefficients. Then we can test our uh, model on a training set. So we will have the predictions by applying the model, the train model with the training set. And this way we have our predictions. And then we will have here the comparison between the predictions and the target. And this is what we have here, the target and predicted signal for one batch. Finally, we can 
listen to the uh, result of the reconstructed signal. And it goes like this. <laughs> So you can observe that there is a difference, an audible difference between the original file and the uh, reconstructed, and it's clearly noisy. So in this way, the autoencoder can be seen as a kind of a filter. It learns a low dimensional subspace from the training set. Every new input is met onto this subspace. And if it doesn't quite fit onto this subspace, major elements might be missing. So now if we apply the same uh, model to the test set, so we split our original, it was a stereo, we use one channel for the training, now we will use the other channel, we'll have predictions from this other channel, this X text, and we will also compare the predictions with the target, and this is what we have here. And we can also listen to it. And you clearly perceive that the reconstructed signal is much more noisier than we used with the training set. So the model was, tra was trained using this X-train uh, data set, which was one channel of the audio, stereo audio signal that we had. And now if we're applying the same model that was trained only onto this training set, we apply a different input to the model and we see that the output of the reconstructed is much more noisy. So we can clearly see how we train our model, it influences in terms of generalization to other uh, signals.